Hi, welcome to Far From Eden. We, as far as I can remember, I have not reacted to anything from this channel before. I've seen some of their videos, not as much as I have Man Reacts, Better Bachelor, Man Guide, etc. It His channel's called The Wall. Very interesting content. And uh, this particular video, um, it's I think it's from last week or something. I started sort of pulling things that looked interesting to watch with you guys. But I'm not going to lie. I did peek. I saw the very beginning of the first chick and what she's saying about like how it's sort of like trying to warn men. Like if you hear this when she's talking on the phone, then you know it's a problem. Sorry, sorry, I have the wind machine, otherwise known as the fan on me. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I was like, there's so many issues with this. I want to watch it with you guys. And the stuff that's supposedly to come, that the video is titled, that the wife cheated and the husband wants revenge. I was like, I, again, okay, I'm a woman. I couldn't resist. It sounds too good. So... Let's watch it together. I want to know what you guys think about about what these ladies have to say. I would really like to know. Let's let's check it out. Spinny wheel until I hit play. If she cheats, never ever take her back. The relationship is over. You deserve a woman who is loyal and would never disrespect you like that. So have the self-respect to walk away and never go back. It's undefeated. The wall comes for us all. The first lady that that spoke, she's right. And I think I, I agree with her. When the woman cheats, it's 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 over. There's no, you can't come back from that. It's too emotional. It's always emotional for the woman. So it's over. And I agree with her wholeheartedly with that. Welcome to the wall. In today's video, we'll see how a man gets back at his ex-girlfriend in a funny way when she cheats on him and wants to bring another man to the house. We'll also look at how women like to manipulate men, even when they're not with them anymore. We want to invite you to smash that like button and help us reach 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year and get our first plaque. The link to this video, to his video, will be in the description. And I encourage you all, please go to this video on his channel, give it a like, and subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. It's good content. It, it's good content. You know, it, it's, it can be frustrating, but at the same time, we know that it helps when you know you're not the only one and the struggle is real. And I think he, 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 it helps to have a chuckle. If you, if you can help, if you can to have a bit of a chuckle with this stuff is the way to survive it because so much of it is absolutely devastating, you know, particularly to men in this day and age. So if you can have a laugh, you need to tell me. That's the only support we ask of you, man. Add your grain of sand to the movement. Share your experience in the comments for any man who might need it. Without further introduction, let's get started. I'm gonna give you one of the fucking biggest red flags you need to pick up on, please. I feel like people like, esto pasa desapercibido, you know? Like, esto like, people don't notice it. I don't know how to say that word in English, so mad fucking bad. If she, if she gets a call and the first thing this woman says, oh, I'm with uh, Mike, I guess that's your name, or I'm with uh, Jason. I'm a job, whatever the fuck your name is. The first thing she says is your name. Oh, I'm with my boyfriend. This woman is doing you so fucking dirty. This woman is being so fucking sneaky and her friends in on it. Her friends in on it. Like I say, your partner's friends are never your fucking friends. So pick up on that shit. How does she answer the phone? She's like, oh, hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? She's like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, I'm with, uh, by the way. I'm with my boyfriend, by the way. Yeah, uh, you're getting cheated on. 
she's, I mean, I don't know much about the 20 something like in the midst of all this, but I do know, you know, the, the nature of the fairer gender and uh, she's right. It's a signal that, Hey, don't talk about such and such or don't say such and such. But what I, what I am picking up on and that I love about this girl is that it seems personal to her to where she's angry that this happens. And, and I like that. I, I like that. I have said, look, we got to pick up allies where we can in the situations that we can. The more we have women seeing things that are just wrong or that are double standards, and calling it out, the better. Even if they're not perfect on all these other things or, you know what I mean? Because that's how you kind of get it going. So I really like that she's out there trying to help in her own way. And I honestly think that most of us who are on this side of things and are not grifters, it's because we've, we've seen a man or multiple men suffer in certain situations. And we've seen where they were left completely alone. No one cared, no one, and the system was against them, you know? So it's encouraging that that these type of women are, are getting out. She's, she's being honest right here. This chick is not doing this to grift. She's not saying this to guys because, oh, this will get me clicks and likes and I'm grifting. I don't see that in her at all. I don't know what the rest of her life is, but for that, for this, I can tell. I thought I pressed play. I'll say two things about this. First, women are experts at manipulation. Those who don't know much about it are always trying to learn. Why do you think videos about toxic women giving tips on hiding their tricks, concealing money, or manipulating their man to do what they want always have millions of views? Since the beginning of- And I didn't know that, but I can see that this chick is being honest. Well, that's fantastic then. That's fantastic. If that's really popular, I'm so excited. That is fantastic. If, if it gets millions and millions of views, it's probably on TikTok. And I've heard that on TikTok, it's it's easier to get like go viral or what have you. Uh, that's great. Sorry about that. my hair in my face. That's great because this is women advocating for men. Even if it's in a small way, they are saying, hey, look, this is what we do. And they're calling out their own sort of behavior. This is a good sign. Are we there yet? Is it safe to come out of MGTOW land? No, but this is a good sign. Of time, women have understood that they can't match men in strength, so they rely more on mental manipulation. Like when she says your name out loud when she picks up the phone. She's either up to something with friends or wants everyone to be quiet so you don't hear what's going on. Second, your partner's friends are not your friends. This is a mistake many men make. Women usually try to separate men from their group of friends because a man alone is more manipulable and dependent on her. That's why she tries to integrate you into her circle of friends, so you share things in confidence, which they will eventually tell her. This is why I always say, don't abandon your friends, because another man can easily tell you when you're being manipulated. You I'm just going to say, has nothing to do at all with what we're talking about. Sarcasm. Narcissists also separate people from their friends for that same reason, you know, to control them, to have more of an influence. Don't ever, ever, ever let a woman do that. That's not somebody who cares about you, you know? Somebody who cares about you is go, go with your friends, go have fun. You know, go play in the band that you do, go play pool, go, you know, shoot darts, go golfing, whatever it is, like go and be into the woods, whatever, whatever you guys do, go fishing. Men need that. They need that. 
you you have to in, almost encourage it sometimes. It's important. So yeah, do never separate them from their friends and their what they love and all of that. You're taking away who they are. And if you really love somebody, why would you do that? You don't want to take away the things that make them them unless you are just trying to, you know, take over their entire life and have everything about them serve you. I'm sure that doesn't happen. You have to be careful with this. Remember, your woman's friends are not your friends. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, When Your Ex Tells You to Move Out While She's on a Work Trip Because the Guy She Cheated On You With Is Moving In, You Get Very Creative When Moving Out. I can't wait. I did this to an ex who asked me to move out while she was on a work trip and told me she was coming back with her new boyfriend. We were still together when she left. <laughs> I got these little noisemakers, battery-powered ones the size of a quarter that emit sounds at just the right volume that you aren't sure if you really heard it. So quiet that two people could be sitting in an average-sized room, and while one can barely hear it, the other <laughs> wouldn't hear a thing. They last ages and fit perfectly in light fixtures and in wall outlets. Oh I got a box God. of 20 for them for like 100 bucks on eBay and got so creative all over the house, her car. I even hid them in a boat her father got her. Rich family and she grew up sailing. There you go. Sorry, editing her up right there. The chick that is doing this to him had a simp daddy. And, you know, whenever they have their princess and have, you know, protected them from accountability and consequences and all of that, that's going to turn into a nightmare. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm thinking of a specific one, but I don't want to say it. I would say it, but now that you guys have gotten the subs up, I'm like, ooh, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, somebody, the ex of somebody who's on Rumble has a lot of followers on Rumble and uh, just got a bunch of strikes on YouTube. Conservative uh, guy. But you can't have, you can't have a, a simp dad. If you have a simp dad, you're going to have a princess. She's going to seem like she's traditional and conservative and all of this, but she wants her way. This guy's funny. Well, that explains how she uh, went on vacation and, and found herself a new toy that she's coming back with. Now, these little bastards exactly. make a noise at a completely random interval. Could be minutes, could be hours, could take the whole day off. They cycle noises like children laughing, a dying breath, <laughs> as they call it, a whistle, scratching noises. Some other ones I can't remember, but you get the idea. It was so unpredictable, it was near impossible for someone to just figure it out. Candy Thunder, I need these. Great. I need these months go by i get a new place get my life back up now we had a few friends in common and one of them i kept up with they were kind of sour about how she ended things but they had grown up together and kept up the friendship loosely talking and catching up on occasion i never really asked about her but one day we got to talking and he wanted to prank some friends on a camping trip so i told him about the noisemakers as i'm telling him about them he slowly starts making this face like he's grad <laughs> Oh, it's funny because it's true. Revenge is a dish best served cold. If someone hurts you, don't commit a crime, fight, or cry to your ex. Be smart and set a trap she won't see coming. Because this man is very clever. Cheaters don't get forgiven. He saw that she already had his replacement and said, I hope you enjoy it because your love won't last long. Now let's see how the story ends because this is the most fun part. He's gradually losing his shit. He's got this huge grin on his face and asks me, you put these in your ex's shit, didn't you? And when I admit it, he starts laughing hysterically. Turns out her new boyfriend had only lasted a few months and had and had left telling her that he couldn't eat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's too, what? I'm sorry. It's too funny. I've never had a story so funny that I couldn't talk. This is... <laughs> Turns out her new boyfriend had only lasted a few months and had left telling her that he couldn't handle whatever was going on with them and their mental states. Turns out for a while they had both heard things and sometimes only one of them would hear them, which gave the illusion that something really effed with them was going on in their heads at different <laughs> times. They couldn't figure it out and eventually he wanted out completely. And having run down all the crazy list of shit people who were hearing voices would think ended it believing he had been infected with some brain worm the government was putting in vaccines or something like that. 
Oh my god. This is the greatest thing ever. Oh. I thought he got infected by a brain worm that the government put in vaccines. It was amazing. I hadn't expected to hear anything about it. I rode that train for weeks. When it went away, I got another hit of that high. She moved out, told her parents she didn't want the house, and to give it to her brother or sell it. Wouldn't tell them why. I always tell people who ask about her that I hold no grudge and don't tell them the part where I totally effed with her so bad that I overshot the got her backstage and hit the blissful state of satisfied with my work my wife knows this story by heart because it's her favorite one to tell you get the slow clap for that one op holy <laughs> shit <laughs> the geek used to sell them they're called annoyatrons oh, that's what you need to look for annoyatrons think geek used to sell them not sure if anyone else sells them but just yeah just search for annoyatrons oh my gosh annoyatrons that is amazing <laughs> I can't stop laughing. In a few words, he turned the house into a haunted house. See, that's revenge served cold. He was calm, didn't hurt her, didn't hit her, and went on with his life as if nothing happened. She couldn't enjoy herself with her new boyfriend. Can you imagine what it's like to be in a house where you hear little noises? Of course, it messes with your mental health. All the time, when you're sleeping, when you wake up, it can drive a person crazy. Yes, because there are annoying sounds, like crickets, but now you hear little noises all day. It throws you off balance mentally. This guy is a genius. He turned her life into a hell that she had to sell the house or run away from it. The worst part is that even the yacht is making noises, making you think you're going crazy. Whoever said that being an independent girl and like moving out of your parents' house and living on your own and like being so independent is fun. Let me just warn you. I used to be the type of girl when I got my paycheck, I'd be like, oh my God, it's going towards my hair. It's going towards my makeup. It's going towards my clothes. Bitch, you know what I spend that shit on now? My rent, my phone bill, my car bill. The other day my car broke down and I literally had no one to call. I have to think of food to cook myself every single night for dinner. When I get sick, I can't just cry to my mom and have her make me make soup. I have to freaking pick up the phone and call the doctor and make my own appointment. Do you know how scary it is to make your own doctor's appointment? Word of advice, Live with your parents and freeload off them for as long as you can. Or get a man to pay for literally everything because, honey, this independent bad bitch shit is not as fun as it seems. Trust and believe. Oh, my. Okay. Okay. If you think that Blondie just then was saying all that to be cute or to be funny or to exaggerate, I think she meant every word of what she just said. Um because growing up as a little princess, apparently, she did not realize that life is difficult and life is, it, it's not easy and it's not fair. Not that fair means everything's paid for you. I'm just saying this is something else she will learn in life. Uh, yeah, it, it's not. And, and who raised her? that she thought that, oh yeah, paycheck just goes to like all the fun extra stuff, like disposable income. How do you get raised? When I was 12 years old, I may not have understood everything about a mortgage and everything that, uh, you know, you have to be responsible for as an adult. But I knew, I knew that there was a mortgage. I knew that there were cars you had to pay for, insurance you had to pay for. I understood that there was a cost, that life has a cost basically food, shelter, transportation, et cetera, healthcare, all has a cost. And I don't understand what she thought it was going to be. If I could ask her that question, I would say, what did you think it would be like when you were told being a girl boss? Although I guess I could ask myself that same question because they told us all of that. That's, the, that's one of the lies of feminism. You know, that your career is going to be everything and you're going to be, you know, you're going to be fulfilled by it. I think the younger generations are, I don't know if they're told it directly, but they're, they're, they're led to believe that working makes you rich. And by and large, no, it does not. Working, if you're lucky, 
pays for your food, your shelter, your health care, transportation. That's if you're lucky. You can work and not have those things. You can not be able to work and then not have those things. Like nobody told her this when she was a child. She is still, you know, she's stunted. She, she acts like, you know, she's what, eight years old. Um, and the other thing that I want to say about what Blondie just said is just live off a man. How about you could be a wife? How about that? How about you be a wife? Women are a lot of times an argument that the feminists make for why not to be a real wife, a stay at home wife and mother is because then you're, you know, you're taking care of the house and you're cleaning and you're cooking and you're homeschooling and you're doing all these things. Well, that's unpaid labor. No, it isn't. Blondie just articulated all that it pays for and takes care of. Food, shelter, transportation, health care. Not only that, but it but when the husband is providing for all of those things, because you are a wife and you're doing the things you're supposed to do, you also don't have to worry or think about those things the same way. You can focus and worry on the family's needs, the family's health, the, you know, what the healthy food is going to be that you're going to cook from scratch. What are you going to grow in the garden next spring? You know, that's, then your mind is freed up to do those things. And then your husband comes home, you are freed up to, you know, serve him and help give him, you know, peace and rest. And so we can go out again and battle the dragons again. And because you've created such a home, he's encouraged, he wants to, you know? So, yeah. If somebody had taught these girls and the women that came before them that, hey, you know, life is tough and life is is not fair, but it's better when you do it with someone whom you compliment. So then you're not struggling trying to do all the things just on your own. We were not made to do that. But she so she brought up a lot that is, you know, worth worth talking about. But I also, I know the stats and who wants to bet she has an OF account? God, who the hell can? For some people, being a functioning adult is terrible because being an adult means taking responsibility for your life, which That's is something true. women don't like. Why do you think so many of them want one or more boyfriends to take care of their lives? They look for a high value man with money to take care of them. Yes, because many talk about being strong and independent, but that comes with caveats. When they have a good family behind them, it's easy because daddy pays the bills. When they come from poverty, less attractive women are forced to become strong. But when they're pretty and spoiled, they're the ones who get the hardest reality check when they see their bubble burst. That's yeah. why you see so many marriages that don't work. Many come with the Disney fairy tale about the wedding and the ring, but when they see the responsibility of running a household and being a wife, they want to get divorced right away because responsibility is kryptonite for women. And it's so dumb because what are you going to do? You're going to get divorced. So, and, and they find this out, they find it out. You, you're going to get divorced and do it all by yourself. How does that make any sense at all? Uh, to think, well, this is really difficult. And I have all these responsibilities and there are expectations on me, which there would be at work too. And those people don't care about you. You have them at home as a wife and hopefully mother, but that's just unacceptable. And so then what you're going to get divorced and then, and then you have to do it all by yourself. They find out it's not better. This whole Disney, uh, everything is going to be sunshine and roses. Everything's going to be easy. Your, your spouse isn't going to ever hurt your feelings or ever say the wrong thing or ever be insensitive. That's ridiculous. I mean, I would love to ask these women, do you, do you expect that of your best friend? Is your best friend always going to be on her best behavior? Is she always going to say the perfect thing? No, that's ridiculous. 
So you pick the one that's the best for you, that gets you the most, and that's your bestie, whatever. Same with your husband. It, you're not going to be on the same wavelength for decades upon decades. You're going to disagree. You're going to, you know, um, go through some struggles with because life is, you know, parents die. Uh, stuff happens in life. And and we often take things out on those that are the closest to us that we think we could never lose. But I think just throwing people away like that is people, especially that you at one point in time said you would love forever and ever makes no sense, especially when it just means it's going to be harder and worse. The problem is these women always think there's something better on the other side and there's not. There's not. Riddle me this. I have not talked to my ex in years. We are high conflict. He is high conflict. We only communicate on a coordinated app. I still hear back from my kids that he brings me up, blames me for things that happen at his home. Huh? During one of the last domestic violence incidents at his home where his current wife called law enforcement on him, I was not there, I was not involved. All of the children were there, all of them saw. I read the police report after. He brings me up while he is being interviewed by a police officer, diagnosing me with borderline personality disorder. We haven't talked. I was not there. In fact, I didn't even know about the incident until the kids called me scared. Why am I in the police report? Anyone else? Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Just by saying that they are very <laughs> conflictive, you make me understand that you were the crazy ex who traumatized your ex-husband. This is a harsh reality. When a good man gets involved with a toxic woman, she makes him suffer so much that he ends up traumatized. This is very bad for the man because many won't seek therapy. I would recommend it because sometimes you need to seek help when you've been mentally messed up. That's why I say women are experts at manipulation. When you are manipulated for so long, even if you leave her, there are still side effects. The truth must be told, but when she says she doesn't know about him, that's a lie. Most crazy exes are always keeping tabs, even after years, and it's worse if they have kids. I'm sure she found out through the kids, and she's probably poisoned them against their father, telling them to report everything that happens at home. They even make the- That's a good point, because why did the kids tell her this stuff? This is, this is horrible. The kids are in the middle if they're already going and telling her this stuff. Like, to that detail, like, I know she said she read the report, but still, I, it's just- I don't believe her. I need to know more about what she's talking about. Child toxic towards the father. That's why you see fathers who don't have good relationships with their kids because yeah. the mother turned them against him. Yeah. And do you know why it's like this? Because look at how she uses it to make content. Once toxic, always toxic. Yeah. We've reached the end of the video. But before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think about this man's revenge? Do you think it was cruel or did she deserve it? What do you think about modern women who never want to take responsibility? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. We will. Uh, what I think about the revenge. Well, yeah, it was pretty hilarious. Um, but I mean, God said vengeance is mine. So I, I am not pro revenge. I don't, I don't think that it's a good thing to do. I think it's a kind of a hilarious story, but I also feel guilty for laughing at it because again, revenge is, is not good. It did remind me of a story where you guys know that I grew up as an equestrian and, and trained horses for a couple decades. Uh, <laughs> somebody I know when they, when she was a kid and they would stay at a hotel 
with a bunch of um, the other riders because they were traveling to go to a horse show to play pranks. They would go into one of the other hotel rooms and they would say they lost their key. And then the hotel room, hotel people would let them up to, oh, she was pretty, let them up to whatever room that was. And she was like a teenager, 14, 15, whatever. And she, they would take these little alarm clocks, you know, old fashioned alarm clocks. And ding, you know, the bells on the top, the thing that hits them. And they would put them all over the hotel room and have them set for different times. So up in the corner where the curtains are, under the bed, like behind the shower curtain, all these different places where it'd be difficult to find. And they would go off. So the first one would be set at, you know, midnight or whatever. And then people would be like, what the heck? And they'd get it down. The next one would go off at one o'clock and so on and so on, which is really bad because we all need sleep when we're competing, et cetera. I was also very against practical jokes because I'm, you know, Miss Prude, but that's what it reminded me of. However, those noises that they said that it made, they said it came up with a death sigh and a, what else was it? Crickets, which wouldn't be too weird, but the other noises, yeah, you would start to really wonder about yourself if that was happening. Gosh. So it was funny though. It was pretty funny. Thank you guys for watching this with me. That was good. I wish we could hear more from the lady with the glasses who was talking about her husband mentioning her and, and that mentioned, isn't it funny she mentioned BPD? Because what I know, <laughs> like it seems like those of us with BPD, the ones that are all sensitive about it, don't have it under control and aren't self-aware aware enough that if somebody calls them that, wow, they freak out. If somebody called me, I don't know, a narcissist or anything, if they, if they called me with some, you know, mental disorder, I, I wouldn't freak out. I would be like, hmm. Or I'd be like, no. Or if they were like, yeah, BPD, I'd be like, yeah, a little bit. And I got it under control. But, but yeah, that's funny. It's funny that she, she, uh, she definitely was like, and he said I had borderline personality disorder. It's like, I think you might just because you said that. <laughs> Cracks me up. Cracks me up. Oh, I thought about doing a channel where it's like, I'm aware of my borderline personality disorder. Let's talk about it, but it just doesn't feel right. I don't know. I think it's it's more helpful here. There's so many, so many of these women really have it. And it's sad because it came from a, a real, you know, trauma or loss in their childhood. It's, it's, you know, but doesn't give you the right to destroy other people. Just because you have something doesn't mean you turn it around and on everybody else. So. Not, not everybody knows that. Not everybody's got a handle on it. Anyway, thank you guys. It was good hanging out with you. And uh, hopefully Homo Noia will be in the chat tonight. He is from Spain. And then he can translate for us what that chick said in the beginning when she said, I didn't know how to translate that. So we'll see. He can help us out there a little bit. If it was uh, Norwegian, we have Rojas. Rojas will help us. I think, is it? Which one of you guys? There's a couple linguists that are usually in the chat. So anyway, I miss you guys. I haven't seen you since last Sunday. So I will see you guys in the chat. And uh, I hope that you've protected your peace today. And I hope that you have fed your soul. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.